Tonight, a driver lucky to escape serious injury following a crash outside of Port Pirie. And South Australians urged to roll up their sleeves and get the COVID vaccine. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. Investigations are continuing into the cause of a crash north of Port Pirie yesterday afternoon. Police and emergency services were called to the scene of a serious incident on the Augusta Highway. Katrina Musson has a story. A police officer has had a lucky escape after colliding with a truck on the Augusta Highway at Napperby. The crash happened just after 4pm yesterday on this stretch of highway outside the Mobile Tin Man Roadhouse just outside of Port Pirie. Emergency services rushed to the scene where a police car was found to have crashed into an oversized truck carrying agricultural machinery. Fortunately, there were no reports of serious injuries. Road trains were backed up for about a kilometre in both directions, with police directing traffic at the intersection of George's Corner. The collision blocking north and southbound traffic for just over two hours. The highway was eventually cleared and reopened to all traffic in both directions. Police say they thank members of the public who stopped at the scene to provide assistance. It is understood the investigation into the circumstances around the crash are ongoing. Anyone who witnessed the collision but was unable to stop is being asked to contact Crime Stoppers. Seven Spencer Golf News reached out to Saypol but they declined to make further comment at this time. Meanwhile, no injuries have been reported after a truck and caravan crash in Port Augusta today. Emergency services were called to the intersection of the Air Highway and Stokes Terrace just after 12.30 this afternoon, following reports of a collision. The incident causing visible damage to the front of the truck and also to the caravan. The Air Highway was reduced to one lane as authorities cleaned up debris causing delays on the Joy Baluk Bridge. New South Wales' far west has recorded three new cases of COVID-19 in the 24 hours to 8 o'clock last night. All are located in Broken Hill, one is a household contact and the other two are linked to a known case. It comes as the state government once again urges people to get vaccinated. We really want to make sure that if you're someone who hasn't had any vaccine, please come forward and get vaccinated. Don't wait. It's better for you, your loved ones and also for the greater community. The state altogether recorded 941 new locally acquired cases, with six elderly people dying from the virus. Four of them were unvaccinated, with two receiving only their first dose. And Spencer Golf residents are encouraged to roll up their sleeves, with double vaccination rates in the state nearly hitting 50%. The RACGP is encouraging people to get the shot now, while community transmission is low. It's a call to arms to get people across the Spencer Gulf vaccinated as soon as possible. The Royal Australian College of General Practitioners Worry complacency has set in due to South Australia's low case numbers. We've been really lucky in the low rates, or negligible rates of community transmission, but we have to be aware that COVID will eventually come to, to South Australia when the borders are open. So far, 49% of South Australians are fully vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccine. However, just 67% have received their first dose. We know that the worst time to get vaccinated is when the outbreak's already started because it takes time for the immunity to be developed. It only takes one positive person to, to bring COVID to South Australia. With Moderna also now rolling out across the state, pharmacies have also become vital in the administration of shots to residents. The vaccine, now available in most chemists across the Spencer Gulf, with some offering walk-in appointments. Just really encourage everybody to get vaccinated now that it's easy to walk into your pharmacy and get it done. There's more bookings available in every town in South Australia. In New South Wales, the state has already handed out close to 87% of first doses, while 63% have received both doses. They're on track to reach 70% of double vaccinated people by October 11. I'd just like to again encourage all South Australians to roll up their sleeves and get vaccinated. You know, we've found our bookings have been really strong and that's really encouraging. 
Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Golf News. Port Augusta's Joy Baluk Bridge duplication will see sections of Javoice and Langford Street remain closed for approximately eight weeks. The road will support new construction and the removal of the Javoice Street underpass. A few weeks of slight traffic delays in a bid to upgrade local infrastructure. Yeah, so Langford Street has been closed this week. Uh, that's part of the bridge duplication. It's allowed contractors to begin construction of a new shared-use path next to the Augusta Highway. Of course there are some interruptions, so there would be some road closures, uh, but we need to make this project as good as it possibly can be. We will end up with two three-metre wide pedestrian bicycle paths. The council says the new path will be a substitute for the soon-to-be-removed Jervois Street underpass. It was decided to support the closure of that underpass and the Direct foot traffic will go up past that area along Langford Street and up towards the church area. Mayor Bembo says the underpass has been a gathering point for anti-social behaviour and has been difficult to maintain as it is managed by the State Infrastructure Department. Jervoice underpass has been an issue for some time. Uh, the lighting is not always um, on because people decide they don't need lights in the tunnel, um, which makes it unsafe for other people. He also says the decision to remove it was almost unanimous amongst councillors, most of whom were in favour of the improvements. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, the continuing lockdown ripping a hole through Broken Hill Council's finances and wandering dogs causing concern in Port Augusta. Welcome back. Police have reported a teenager after a gel blaster was found at his home in Sejuna on Tuesday. At around 5.15pm on September 28, police responded to reports of a disturbance at a local home where a teenage boy was allegedly in possession of a knife. Police searched the boy's home and allegedly located a gel blaster and ammunition. The 16-year-old boy was reported for possessing an unregistered firearm and possessing a firearm without a licence. He will be summoned to appear in court at a later date. It's been revealed the current lockdown is leaving Broken Hill City Council with a monthly shortfall of $100,000. A report presented to councillors this week blamed a drop in tourism, retail, events and airport traffic for the decline. The cost of increased cleaning also having an impact on the bottom line. The report says there have been no major potential savings identified, as most departments are already working to a tight budget. Port Augusta residents are being urged to keep their dogs locked up at home for the safety of themselves and others in the city. Animal control officers say there has been an increase in dogs wandering at large in the community. Fears of dogs on the loose in Port Augusta. Council says local pets are causing a nuisance as they are distressed and may harass people or other animals. We have had some reports of uh, excessive dogs out and about by themselves and roaming around the town. It's, it's important that people that own their animal respect and look after their animal. Council says many are being spotted on the streets or in public areas without an owner or under effective control. Residents raising concerns children and other dogs may approach the possibly aggressive animals. Stray dogs are also known to cause road accidents by unknowingly wandering onto busy streets resulting in injuries to the pet and even drivers on some occasions. People with their animals now have got them chipped so it's pretty quick to zap them and find out who owns what. Um, but yeah, report what you see and, and council will act as quickly as they can. Animal control officers will now be clamping down on the issue with owners to be fined in an attempt to address the problem. The community is encouraged to report any sightings of unattended dogs to Port Augusta Council. People that have got animals, make sure you know where they are, look after them, restrain them when they are out in the streets and uh, let's keep everybody safe from any harm. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Wellbeing SA is calling on South Australians to collectively walk one billion steps to improve their health and well-being this October. It's the second year the initiative is run, encouraging people to get moving and increase their physical activity. 
The Billion Steps Challenge is free to sign up through the 10,000 Steps website, where participants can upload their daily step count. The challenge starts Friday, October 1. New ABS figures have revealed deaths by suicide have fallen slightly in South Australia over the past year. Young to middle-aged people are still at high risk, with stresses from the pandemic identified as a factor for the first time. Mark Zeta has more. New data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics has shown deaths by suicide has fallen in South Australia. In 2020, 234 people died due to intentional self-harm, a decrease of 17 people from 2019. However, deaths by suicide have increased on average since 2012 when 198 were recorded in that year. The statistics also show males in South Australia are at higher risk of taking their own life compared to women. In addition, there have been 28 deaths related to children between 5 to 17 years of age from 2016 to last year. The ABS stating that young and middle-aged people are more likely to die by suicide compared to older age cohorts. For the first time, the statistics also show that stress related to the COVID-19 pandemic is having an impact. The reports showing mood disorders and unemployment are among the leading reasons. The number of deaths in regional SA is lower compared to Adelaide. Nationally, suicide was the 15th leading cause of death among Australians last year. And if you or someone you know needs help, support is available. Please call Lifeline on 13 11 14 for free and confidential 24 hour, seven days a week counselling. Stay with us. A York Peninsula library set to trial a South Australian first and Port Lincoln businesses begin networking once again. Tourism may have come to a sudden stop in Broken Hill, but results from the It's Out There tourism campaign suggest the region can expect another boom. Campaign data showing 5 million people saw promotional material for the Far West since it launched early last year. A third of those say they'd consider a trip to the region, with young adults particularly interested. Council and Destination New South Wales spent a total of $610,000 on the campaign. The Kadena Community Library has become the first in South Australia to allow around-the-clock access to the building as part of a trial initiative. The Copper Coast Mayor says they're proud to be leading the way. You've heard of 24-7 gyms, but what about libraries? We've got a new innovation, um, first library in South Australia to actually um, have this operational um, and it gives an opportunity for our community members to access the library out of our normal opening hours. The Kadena Community Library offering members who sign up unlimited access as part of a new trial. So it's quite easy for people to put a hold or a reservation on something that they might like. When that comes in, we let them know and then they have the convenience to come and pick it up and self-check it out to themselves at any time. The initiative came about earlier this year with the Copper Coast University Centre co-located at the facility. Uni students were given key tag access to use at a time convenient for them, that offering now expanding to the community been so positive. I mean being part of a rural area of course um, people don't always have the opportunity to be in town during the week and, and as standard opening hours but on top of that we've got a lot of people that work or have other commitments in life. The Copper Coast Mayor also backing the initiative. I think it's a service that will grow and you know we're really proud that we're you know leading the way in the way you can access libraries in South Australia. Anyone who is interested is asked to contact the library. Katrina Musson, 7, Spencer Golf News. The Port Lincoln Chamber of Commerce have rebooted their bi-monthly business after hours event. Local members gathered last night, using the time to hear from guest speakers and network with others in the business community. Port Lincoln business owners coming together for the first time in this forum since the COVID pandemic began. The business after hours networking event returning to the Chamber of Commerce's calendar. It's great just to interact with everybody that's, you know, like-minded and in the same industry as yourself. 
More than 30 local business owners attended the event held at the Rebel. Two guest speakers provided insight into how they can improve the everyday operations of their business. I'm really fortunate that the Port Lincoln Council and the Chamber of Commerce have gotten involved and really want to support and back the program. Kelly Smith from Plastic Free SA, one of the guest speakers on the night. She says it's important for local food and beverage businesses to have all the facts as the industry transfers to Plastic Free. So any food retailers, cafes, restaurants, pubs can all get on involved. It's completely free for them. We're able to provide advice on which items they should be using. The MBN also providing information on their new business fibre initiative. Those in attendance saying these types of events are invaluable in helping them expand their horizons. Get some feedback and um, maybe more information. It's the best way to sort of help yourself grow and help your business grow. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Stay with us after the break. We check what's biting in the Spencer Gulf. And I'll have all the latest weekend weather details for the region. Hello again. Time now for a look at what's biting when you drop a line in the Spencer Gulf this long weekend. Here's our experts with their tips. Welcome to another week around the golf fishing tips from Port Pirie. It's just fantastic. At the moment we've got that little bit of rain that's actually slowed the season down so that'll give you a better chance to catch some more King George whiting. So if we're looking around the areas we've still got Woods Point going really well so you should be able to get your feet of whiting. Come round to Port Pirie, it's still Eastern Shoal that's producing and Checker Boy. But don't forget the squid's sort of starting to taper off but while you're at Checker Boy perhaps try over your crab net. Don't forget also that we've got a lot of snook floating around the place at the moment and as we do every long weekend to remind you a little bit of boat ramp etiquette. Have a great weekend and a safe weekend. G'day and welcome to this week's fishing tips from Port Augusta, Jewel North. Well, the big high tides in the morning mean those seasons are starting to change. Just remember that razor fish band comes in and just check the exact date for that that comes in. Crabs are starting to move around at the moment. They tip there all the time, just wait a little bit first on the first pull and then they'll start coming on the bite. There are some kingfish around. Uh, there's not many photos floating around. I have seen some kingfish landed and there's been some people up around the train bridge area as well, so that might be worth a go for some kingfish. King George Whiting, pretty well all but gone at the moment. There's a few garfish. If you get a nice calm night, go out there and try diving for garfish. And that's all we have from the Jewel of the North. Hi, Wales Fishing Tips this week. Again, King George Whiting hitting the table from all locations around Wyala. Some hot areas to, to target have been the Marricks Tire Reef and the Boilers in the same spot. Also further south towards Cowlitz Landing and even further down towards Menini. The Eastern Shoal has been fantastic for King George Whiting as well. Some blue summer crabs starting to come in the deeper waters around Wyala and land-based some fantastic salmon schools working around the Becky Point coastline. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips around Port Lincoln. Well, the whiting are finally on the improve in our local bays with uh, some nice fish caught in the proper in Spalding Cove and up along the North Shore. Moving over to Coffin Bay, whiting have still been pretty consistent around the farm beach grounds whereas back inside the uh, bay system there has been some garfish, salmon trout and some tommies through there. The surf beaches at uh, Almonta and Convention Beach um, have been uh, offering quite a few salmon and also Lockswell up the coast has some nice salmon up there and Venus Bay has been producing a few whiting and salmon trout in the bay. Well, that's all for this week. We'll see you again with more tips next week. Turning to the weather now, and we're set for a mixed bag over the long weekend. More on that later, but let's first look at today's details. And it was a mostly wet day across the region. From 3pm today, while in Port Augusta reached 20, Port Pirie a degree cooler, 19 there, Port Lincoln was 17, Adelaide a chilly 15, Broken Hill was partly cloudy in 23, and Coober Pedy was sunny, reaching a region high of 24 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, and cloud over the northeast pastoral with a trough is triggering showers and storms. Clouds streaming into southern SA with southerly winds feeding into this trough are causing showers, mainly in the southeast. Skies are clear elsewhere with a ridge of high pressure. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters. And the region can expect south to southwesterly winds between 10 and 15 knots. Seas will be around a metre, and the swell will be south to southwesterly less than a metre. Looking at the temperatures and conditions for tomorrow now, and a mostly sunny day on the Air Peninsula. Port Lincoln 18, Cleve expecting a top of 19 degrees, Woodna partly cloudy and a mild 24.
Looking further north now, while a partly cloudy and 20 degrees, Port Augusta set to reach 21. Kadena can expect 19 degrees with the chance of a shower. Port Perry can expect a shower to end the working week, the city reaching 20. Clare will have some rain and will reach a wintry 15. And Broken Hill will be cloudy but dry, the Silver City expecting a top of 20. Taking a further look through the week now, and a mostly fine and warm Saturday is expected. Cooper Pedy windy and hot 33 predicted there, while in Port Perry 26, Port Lincoln 20 with the chance of a shower, and Adley can expect 22. On Sunday, showers for Port Perry, Port Lincoln, Woodnick, Kadena and Adelaide. Dry everywhere else. Broken Hill and Port Augusta 25, while at 24. And similar conditions for the public holiday Monday. There will be showers in the south and east, while it will be partly cloudy in the west and the north. Port Lincoln reaching 18, Port Augusta 23, Port Perry 20 degrees. And Kadena can expect a top of 18 degrees there. And that's the local news this Thursday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later, and we will return tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Until then, on behalf of the team, enjoy your evening here on 7. Good night.